Each year, Mount Sinai honors a select number of outstanding alumni and faculty members whose careers exemplify the highest ideals of the Mount Sinai Health System. They have made incredible contributions in clinical care, biomedical science, and medical education. They've given extraordinary service and leadership to the health system, the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and the Alumni Association. These are colleagues who personify excellence in the Mount Sinai tradition. This year's Jacoby Medallion honorees include the founding chair emeritus of our Department of Oncologic Sciences and a distinguished cancer researcher, a highly esteemed leader, executive vice president, and chief clinical officer of the health system, renowned experts in the field of nephrology and pediatric gastroenterology, and a national leader in geriatrics and palliative training programs. With the Jacoby Medallion, we honor their achievements and we express our appreciation for their important roles in making Mount Sinai Health System one of the nation's leading academic medical centers. Congratulations. It's hard to describe the feeling that a scientist or a doctor obtains when they find something that's never been found before. There's a rush that one feels. It really gives a feeling of such immense joy that you just want to keep going back for more. Stewart is the founding chair of our Department of Oncological Sciences at Mount Sinai and is a world-renowned cancer researcher. His extensive investigations into oncogenes and growth factor signaling have resulted in diagnostic tests and FDA-approved therapies for certain cancers, making him a leader in the field. Stu Aronson is definitely the seminal leader that established the infrastructure and the culture and the breadth and depth of research here at Mount Sinai. I'm really proud to have contributed to the development of the institution, to the point where it is now one of the top 10 or 15 medical schools in the country. I'm proud of the fact that we have an NCI-designated cancer center. I'm proud of the people that we've trained that have gone on to lead other departments and institutions, both here in this country and around the world. He's really witnessed and, and helped lead this transition out of the sort of dark ages of lack of knowledge in the disease and this new knowledge, which has really been the framework for developing new therapies for the disease. In breast cancer, we found a gene, a member of a family of receptor genes, that we identified as being amplified in a breast cancer. And that gene we called ERB2, or now it's also called HER2. It led to antibody therapy for breast cancer that is in many cases curative, or it leads to really long-term remissions. It's a huge, huge moment in our treatment development. What did Mount Sinai gain? Mount Sinai really was put on the map in terms of cancer research, we always were very strong in terms of clinical aspects of cancer, but he has really put us on the map nationwide as well as in the world in terms of cancer research. By honoring Dr. Stuart Aronson with a Jacoby medallion, we are honoring a man who has been a force of nature in cancer here at Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai has given me a wonderful opportunity. We keep pushing, we keep on developing. People go into the lab, they want to find something important, and you, you hit your head against the wall. But if you're lucky enough to identify something and then learn for sure that it's important, above all, I'm proud of the things that we've discovered over the years that I hope have contributed to better health and better treatment of cancer. Sinai has always felt like the right place for me. This is an organization that creates an environment where people can take chances and come together to work on and solve some of the hardest challenges in healthcare. And I've been witness to that for decades. I'm blown away with what our medical school creates. 
I'm blown away with what our hospitals and our ambulatory environment creates and what they deliver. And that nobody's satisfied. <laughs> I have yet to run into anybody who says, well, we're good enough. There's just a fire in the belly of this organization to not accept the status quo. And that makes me really happy. Jeremy has been a leader at Mount Sinai since his residency at Mount Sinai Hospital in 1996. He co-founded Mount Sinai's Visiting Doctors Program, which provides in-home primary care to more than 1,000 patients annually. In 2013, Jeremy became the first chief medical officer of the newly formed Mount Sinai Health System. He also helped lead our response to COVID-19. And simply put, Jeremy has been a visionary leader, a mentor, a clinician, and a true citizen of Mount Sinai. If I had to guess, at what Mount Sinai means to Jeremy. It has been a place where he has been able to express his highest aspirations. We've known each other since residency training and we together developed the Visiting Doctors Program as an opportunity to bring primary care and then a little later also palliative care to people who are homebound. We needed to flip the model on its head and have doctors and nurses and social workers and others go into patients' homes and bring them the services that they needed. It was a very difficult thing to figure out how to integrate the system, how to bring the strengths of each site. How are we going to transform? How are we going to create an environment where people come to work excited about the opportunity to change lives? Jeremy really set the right tone that put us on the right path to being a collegial and powerful system. He was part of our roadmap for action to address racism. He took a very pivotal role in helping to guide the direction to start moving our focus on being an equitable and anti-racist organization. If there was one person that I would point to to say, if it were not for he, this would not have happened. By honoring Jeremy Bowl with the Jacoby Medallion, we're honoring a man who helped mentor and develop a generation of leaders at Mount Sinai, who helped us confront the terrible crisis of COVID. Jeremy was one of those voices that saw us through that catastrophe. He had such empathy for people, for human suffering. You know, there are no awards for that. I can't think of another person who I believe would be more worthy than Jeremy for this award because his contributions to the organization, they're immeasurable. I feel strongly that so much of what we do is about the team, but I don't feel strongly enough to not accept this with tremendous gratitude. Sinai has given me the career I couldn't have even dreamed of. I've had the chance to spend decades working with extraordinary people on the most important mission of all. To be recognized by an organization you know, with those values means the world to me. I was very honored when I was told that I got the Jacoby Medallion. I've been able to really embark upon a career as a physician scientist, an educator, leader of different programmatic initiatives to support diversity, equity, inclusion, and research education. It's really positioned me for leadership of national organizations and participating in drug development activities and clinical trials. This is really living the dream. Kirk is a world-renowned expert in nephrology and is the founding director of the Center for Kidney Disease Innovation at Mount Sinai. The center leverages genomics, bioinformatics, and molecular phenotyping to facilitate the discovery of new treatments for serious kidney disease. He is also one of Mount Sinai's principal investigators of the transformative NIH FIRST grant, which aims to diversify the biomedical research workforce and promote inclusive excellence. There's this proverbial triple threat that has been around forever and many of us think that the triple threat is gone. I don't think so. I think we have an example in Kirk, in clinical care, research, education. He's been at the forefront of this renaissance in kidney disease, especially regarding glomerular diseases. 
African Americans are four times more likely to develop end-stage kidney disease requiring dialysis. As a researcher, I wanted to make an impact by increasing understanding of how kidney disease progresses. Some of the proteins he studied may be mediators of disease that can be targeted with new therapies that we really didn't have much of an arsenal to treat at all. It's just an exciting time and Kirk has been at the forefront of all of it. I spend most of my time on biomedical research, but I'm an actively practicing clinician with a significant interest in patients with glomerular diseases, with protein spilling kidney disorders, actively engaged in clinical trials, testing novel therapeutics for patients. We want to make sure that our leaders also mirror the communities we serve. So Kirk has been really instrumental in making sure we have the pipeline, that we have mechanisms to think about how to diversify our trainees and our leaders, but also our faculty in general. We want to demonstrate to these individuals that they can do it, right? And they get to see other folks who look like them doing it quite well, and, and that's powerful. Because of this work, he's going to have a very proud legacy at Mount Sinai. By honoring Dr. Kirk Campbell with the Jacoby Medallion, we are honoring someone who inspires excellence in everything that he does. Montana has given me the opportunity to really realize uh, dreams that I could not have imagined when I first set foot through the door. IBD can be a lifelong struggle. For me, it is really this intense passion to change their lives, to give them what they need to thrive. I see myself as really the warrior for them. I accept nothing less. I want to give them nothing less to help them flourish. It's not often in your life that you're part of that journey. Marla is a world-renowned leader in inflammatory bowel disease and has been involved in clinical and translational research for more than two decades. Along with her keen interest in precision IBD medicine, her research uncovers predictors of rapid disease progression with the goal of preventing complications by altering treatment plans. There's IBD centers and then there's the Mount Sinai IBD Center. Before the current IBD center was really built, there was a gap. Pediatricians were over here managing children and their parents. Adult-based care was over here. There was no common place to have seamless integration of the entire lived experience of an IBD patient from childhood and beyond. The iPrep clinic that Marla developed, which really came with the idea that young people affected with IBD are in the prime of their childbearing years, it's very complex. What Marla has done is take the burden off of patients and their families, really supporting them from the beginning. She's with them every step of the journey. She is so much more than a clinician scientist and the director of the IBD Center. She has had a personal impact on so many people's lives. It is extremely important to me that I build a legacy. And the best way to build a legacy is to take young, talented superstars and really help pave the way for them to have success in this field. She has done more for me as a young woman in medicine than anybody else has. It's very tough to be a young woman in medicine. There's always the concern of, am I good enough? Am I in the right spot? Do I deserve to be here? I want to show them that even if there were barriers, you get through them. Either go around, or you walk right through and smash it down. She has taught me to own the seat at the table. The Jacoby Medallion is really for people who have contributed in a very significant way to Mount Sinai, and it's for people who are highly accomplished in their fields and show Mount Sinai at its best. Marla hits all those marks. The Jacoby Award is really a culmination of all the hats that I wear and of course the platform and the opportunity that Sinai has allowed for me to wear these hats and to really be able to grow and thrive in an environment that has really been important in my personal growth and trajectory in my career. Someone as creative and energetic and dynamic as Marla needs a place where she can spread her wings. She needs a place where innovation is really encouraged and supported. That's the environment that she found here and that's what really has supported her all the way.
My passion for education comes from the fact that I had very excellent role models. My father is a cardiologist in Queens. We lived above his office. Our waiting room was also our living room. He taught me very early on the importance of education. Money goes away quickly, but education stays with you, and that's how you're gonna change the world, is getting a better understanding of the world. Helen is an outstanding leader in geriatrics and palliative medicine who has mentored and guided countless students, residents, and fellows. She created one of the first and largest geriatrics and palliative training program in the country which has trained approximately 20% of the nation's workforce. Along with her clinical skills, knowledge, and judgment, Helen always shows compassionate concern and sensitivity for her patients and their families. When Helen started in this field, one of the challenges that American healthcare faces is that there will never be enough geriatricians to care for the number of older adults in this country. And there will never be enough palliative medicine physicians to care for those living with serious illness. So what she's done is tackled the workforce challenge, not by just increasing the number of people out there, but thinking about how can we create the leaders who will create systems of change we have to empower our young trainees, our students, our residents to become better advocates, to promote, to push the research envelope. As soon as you meet her, you're struck by how gentle she is. Nothing can replace human connection. And what Dr. Fernandez does so beautifully is sit with the patient and use nonverbal communication to convey true empathy and compassion. And that's what I want to emulate one day as a physician. What are you doing for exercise? A very, not, nothing violent. Just <laughs> I like that. Stretching. With every patient encounter, I bring my real self. I want to be very authentic. I hope my students learn, always be curious. Always be curious of how can I make this experience better for my patient. When I was informed that I received the Jacoby Award, I was jumping up and down to be recognized in such an incredible way by this community of the family of Mount Sinai. It really resonated that I really kind of made it. In my eyes, the Jacoby Medallion is awarded to people who are not only extraordinary doctors or scientists, but who are also remarkable people. And when I think about Dr. Fernandez, I see how she's a leader, but also the most gentle and kind physician and mentor I could ever imagine and learn from. I've learned from my father, who's 92 now, that there's always a capacity to learn. I don't see the glasses half empty. I don't see the glasses half full. I'm always challenging myself to fill up the rest of the glass.